Isaiah 32, just going to read a couple verses. The Bible says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure did enjoy the good singing. We enjoyed the sweet spirit of God just kind of flowing through here during the singing. My heart was uplifted. Lord, I'm glad for a song in due season. Lord, I'm thankful, Father, for the goodness of God and the hope of heaven. We do have much to thank you for. And God, I'm glad we have much to look forward to, Lord, when we get over yonder. Now, Father, I thank you for the good testimonies. I thank you for being a good God. I thank you, Lord, for being far better to us than we deserve. Lord, I'm thankful for mercy and grace. I'm thankful for the long-suffering of God. Lord, we're certainly thankful for the privilege of being in the house of God tonight. Lord, we can never thank you enough for Calvary. Could never thank you enough for the truth of the Word of God, the precious promises contained therein. God, we've just been so blessed. We thank you for our families, and thank you, Lord, uh, for how good you've been to folks here in the church. And, Lord, we just want to bless you. Now, Father, I ask that you'd uh, help those that are working with the teens. Lord, those young people are under so much peer pressure. Lord, they face so much in this day and age. And, God, I pray that, Lord... Uh, 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 they'll hear the word of God back there tonight. It'll insulate them from a lot of hardship in this world. Uh, Father, I pray they'd take the word of God and hide it in their heart that they might not sin against thee. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, you would use Brother Jordan and Brother Josh and Miss Brittany as they're working with the teens. Uh, and God, I pray that, Lord, you'd bless our young people. Thank you for those that are here in the sanctuary. God, we're appreciative of all these young people. God, I pray you'd bless them and help them. And Father, I pray for the saints of God now. You'd edify them, enlighten their minds to truth, encourage them, uh, grow their faith, and Lord, help them to truly uh, be transformed into thy likeness and shine as a light, and Lord, in this dark and depressed and dispersed world. Uh, Father, I do pray, if there be any amongst us, as Brother Ron prayed, uh, who are strangers to the grace of God. They're lost in their sin. Uh, God, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray once again you'd use this unworthy vessel. You'd glorify your namesake and you'd help the family of God. Uh, Father, we bless you. And Lord, we thank you for your good grace. Have your will away now, for it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus. We ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, Amen. We find in these verses, uh, first of all, the reigning of kings. Uh, verse number one, it said, the reign, uh, A king shall reign in righteousness. Uh, boy, I would to God we'd have uh, leaders in our country that would rule and reign in righteousness. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Uh, wouldn't it be a blessing to turn on a radio or television uh, and a politician stand up and tell us the truth? Wouldn't that be blessing. Uh, wouldn't it be a blessing to know that what they're telling us they really believe uh, and they're going to live thereby. Uh, but hey, uh, we don't live in that day and age now. Uh, we live in a day and age where they uh, want to tickle your ears like a lot of preachers today. Uh, they want to tell you what you want to hear uh, but uh, many today don't want to know the truth. Uh, they don't want to be confronted with truth. Uh, the truth hurts uh, and folks don't like to hear uh, that they're sinners and need to be saved by the good grace of God. Uh, they don't want to hear they're wrong. Uh, they don't want to hear what the Bible has to say. But we find here Isaiah said, a king shall reign in righteousness. Uh, I'm glad the king of kings reigns in righteousness. I'm glad he does all things well. Uh, notice it also says that uh, there's the ruling of princes. Uh, it says, and prince shall rule in judgment. Uh, I would to God we had judges that would rule in judgment. we rule in righteousness. Uh, it amazes me how many judges rule based upon the staple and the paperwork that was uh, passed down in the indictment. 
It amazes me how many people uh, are arrested and they've already got four more warrants for their arrest and they're out walking around committing crimes uh, they just let out last month. Why were they let out? I mean, it doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, if somebody is a, an ongoing criminal, throw them in jail and throw away the key. Uh, uh, listen, we got a jail ministry. Go preach to them so they get saved. Uh, hey, but uh, hey, old Sammy Davis Jr. sang the song, uh, If You Can't do the time then don't do the crime I mean uh, but, but today they do the crime and they're right back out they don't do any time uh, they say well we don't have jails big enough to hold them well build some bigger ones huh or why don't we start handing down corporal punishment once again you know what there'd be plenty of jail space of all them on death row would end, end in death huh I know I'm, I know I'm being mean and sarcastic and all but that's just the truth of the matter huh you know when uh, America didn't have this problem? When they'd have public hangings. You march your children out and say, this is what happens to you if you break the law. Hmm? Guess what? Children would think twice about breaking the law. Hey, but we got moms and dads that don't even correct children now. Uh, uh, here's correction, brother. One, two, three. And then nothing happens. Uh, uh, you ask Christian. He had a belt laid on him before we got to two. Uh, it was uh, you do and if he didn't he got lit up you say well, well that must have warped him yep now he's a police officer and he's taking it out on criminals what a blessing huh uh, no you know why children act up because they don't respect the parents you know why they don't respect the parents the parents don't keep the rules mm? you know all young people really want they want to know what the rules are and they want, want them to be followed. Yeah. Uh, every time they act up, if you say, okay, I'm going to ground you, and then you feel bad that you ground them, and you go out and you buy them some expensive toy, you haven't really corrected them. Mm. Uh, you've made yourself a patsy. Uh, there's a whole lot to say in the Bible about sparing the rod. There's a whole lot about how to correct your child. I'm not talking about abusing your child. I'm talking about correcting them. And by the way, if you don't break their will, you haven't corrected them. Mm? All you've done is made them mad at you. Mm? Uh? Seth, did your daddy ever break your will? I've seen him light you up a few times. It's always a blessing to see their feet come off the floor. That was a blessing. It really warped him. huh? He's had to schedule graduate college early. We look at him. He's in the house of God tonight, uh, serving God. Uh, found a girl wants to marry him. I can't believe it. What a blessing, huh? Huh? Zachary, did your dad ever get on you much? Huh? Huh? He took all his frustration and Natalie out on you, didn't he? Huh? No. Fine young man sitting there, just about ready to graduate college too, huh? What a blessing. I mean, he's got a little inferiority complex. That's why he goes to college and puts on their costume. But anyway, other than that, he's, he's all right. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is, folks, if you don't discipline them right, when they, when they turn out to be teenagers, turn out to be hoodlums, don't blame the preacher. Mm. We've got a problem in America. We've got a problem with a lot of children that's not being raised by their parents. we got a problem with a lot of parents that... Uh, uh, don't need children. No. Amen. We just got a problem in America. There's a discipline problem. There's a respect problem. Used to, I, I mean to tell you, you didn't dis disrespect your teacher. You didn't disrespect a law enforcement official. You didn't respect some, uh, disrespect somebody in authority. Uh, if you did, when you got home, you'd learn what respect was, huh? Yes, well, today, kids don't respect... Uh, 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 the parents they don't respect the teachers they don't respect uh, law enforcement they don't respect the preacher Lord have mercy I will never forget I'll never forget I was about 10 years old and I called a preacher by his first name my mama backhanded me it still hurts <laughs> you just didn't do that you didn't show disrespect to the man of God but we live in a day and age now where you know they don't respect the preacher because mom and dad don't because at Sunday dinner that's all they're doing is talking bad about the preacher hmm you're welcome. I'm not even preaching. You done made some of you mad. What a blessing. I told you it was short, but you all wasn't listening, so I had to make it longer, huh? But it said, the princess shall rule in judgment. I've got good news. The righteous judge is coming. And he's going to set all the wrongs right, and he will rule with a rod of iron, huh? 
And they're not getting away with it. I know we live in America in a two-tiered justice system. Uh, I know that if you and I commit a crime, we go to jail. If we don't pay our taxes, we get fined and lose everything we got. Uh, but if your last name is Clinton or Obama or Biden or any other politician, uh, 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 McConnell or anybody else, uh, you can live like a heathen. You can do whatever you want to. Uh, and it seems like you get away with it. Uh, uh, whatever happened to all those emails of Hillary? Uh, whatever happened to those hard drive she busted up uh, hey there's enough evidence uh, I to throw the Bidens under the jail for all the money they've taken in kickbacks uh, from the Ukraine and from uh, uh, China and by the way how come we're still sending money to Ukraine uh, because it's coming back to our politicians that's why uh, 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 my dear friends all this wickedness is going on and it seems like they're getting away with it uh, but I got news for you uh, uh, Jesus is coming uh, and nobody's getting away with anything. He's keeping a record. Uh, and one of these days he's going to right all the wrongs. Uh, mm. uh, but then we find in verse number two that it concludes about a great rock in a weary land. Can I say we live in a weary land? We live in a land that was built upon the principles and oracles of this book. We live in a land that was uh, designed for men and women to live in freedom that they could worship God. Uh, we live in a land that God blessed because uh, our forefathers came here seeking God. Uh, they went to Mexico seeking gold. Uh, that's why Mexico's a third world country. Uh, but America's turned their back on God and we're headed to be in worse shape than them. Uh, hey, uh, 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 seen what Jesus said uh, in the Bible about if the works had been done in Sodom as were done in Tyre and Sidom. Uh, hey, uh, America has been blessed uh, and where much is given, much is required uh, and the judgment of God's going to fall on America. Uh, hey, because America's turned her back on God. We live in a weary land. I want to tell you, uh, I remember when all the nations of the world came to America to see our matchless constitution and it came to America to reap the resources of America. But can I say we've outsourced everything to everywhere else? Can I say you're hard-pressed to find anything even made in America anymore? Yeah. Can I say there's coming a day when this uh, fake economy we've got that's been built upon paper that's no longer uh, uh, backed up by the gold standard, and when it all comes shaking down, America's going to fall, and it's going to fall hard, friend. You know why? Because America's dishonored God. Amen. Can I say things that used to never even be thought about in America is marching down the streets? Yeah. Mm. Right. Listen. I'm here, might as well just drill at home, huh? That mess called pride. I'm glad we're finally in the real pride month. We're in the pride of the red blue. But that mess marching down our streets. It's one thing if they choose they want to live that lifestyle and become a reprobate. That's between them and God and they're going to pay for it. But when they march down the street with children in their arms and walking around with undressed and wicked and vile uh, and one of them dressed up like the devil himself said, we're coming for your children. Mom and dad, you better wake up. Uh, you better be concerned about what your children are watching, uh, what they're playing on video games, uh, what they're listening to. Uh, the devil's hard at work and he's coming for your children. Uh, uh, we've got school systems that teach uh, that doctors didn't have it right when you was born. Uh, and it's not till you're about six or seven years of age you to choose your gender. Uh, no, God made you what you are. He made you a man a female. Uh, he didn't make you to mutilate, mutilate your body. Uh, you study your Bible. You go to 1 Kings 18. Uh, hey, that devil's crowd's the one that cut themselves. Uh, hey, mutilation's always of the devil. Uh, God came to give us life and give it more abundantly. Uh, we're living in a weary land full of wicked people. Uh, I'm sick and tired of turning on the television and seeing two men kiss each other. That wicked and ungodly makes me puke. You said you shouldn't say puke. Okay, it makes me vomit through my nose. I mean, it just makes me sick. Bunch of wickedness. I like what Barry Goodman said. 
He said he was a man trapped in a woman's body. And then his mama had him. Oh, some of you get that. We live in a weary land. Can I say that in Romans chapter number 1, it says that this earth with groanings is waiting for the king to come. Some of these earthquakes, some of these storms, some of these uh, uh, things that are happening is just the earth quaking under the pressure of sin, and this world is tired of it. Jesus is coming soon. We live in a weary land. We live in a wayward land. There's so many dispersed people in this country. There are folks that aren't from here, and they're trying to fit in here, and they're trying to do it on our dollar. I'm all for legal immigration. Because other than Miss Veronica's people, we're all here from somewhere else. No, not many Native Americans floating around Florida right now. We all came from somewhere. Now, I don't mind folks coming here. They come legally. I got a real problem with during pandemics, we got politicians with a signature on a pen that does away with all our immigration laws uh, and opens our borders and lets people come and pays for people to come. How are they getting here? They're getting here on our dollars. I'm not only talking about our southern border. Florence is being flooded with people from Africa. They didn't have two nickels to rub together in Africa. How'd they get to Florence? How'd they afford housing in Florence? Hmm? I know people who worked all their life can't afford a housing in Florence. How are they doing it? Somebody's paying for it. But we've got people that are coming from everywhere, but they don't feel like they belong. We're living in a wayward land. It's gone wayward. I mean, just crazy. I, I really mean it. We need to start praying about starting an African ministry. Because they're coming here and they're marching them straight to Amazon to work, and they're marching them straight to the mosque over there by the water tower to worship. There ain't no true worship going on there. Somebody needs to reach these folks. And they're coming. We might as well reach them with the gospel. huh? It's not too late to start a Spanish church. Outside of Hamilton County, Ohio, the last statistic I read, the most Mexicans in this area is in Boone County. They're coming. We might as well win them to, to, to the Lord. You know what? We ought, might as well win some Caucasian people while they're still here. We ought to reach them with the gospel. But we live in a wayward land. It's lost its way. The American way is a dying thing. Mm. I mean, everything's messed up. I mean, used to, the Olympics was young people that had worked hard to go uh, uh, represent our country, and they'd go face, we knew, professionals in Russia, and it made it sweeter when we beat them. But now we're taking professionals and send them to the Olympics, uh, and they all got an agenda, and it's usually got a rainbow and not used for the right way. I haven't watched the Olympics in years because they're not representing America anymore. Can I say college... Ball players used to go, represent their university, represent their family, and the college game was great because uh, big money hadn't ruined it. Guess what they've done? Now they're paying the players in college. It's ruining it. They're flipping schools every other year. They're going somewhere else. Uh, that's what ruined uh, sports. When folks could be a free agent, go wherever they want to, so they make all these... You know, we got the rules of a salary cap, but the Yankees ignore it. And they pay the fine. The Yankees pay more in payroll in one year than the Reds will pay in 10 years. Uh, no wonder they got all the athletes, huh? It's ruined. The days of the big red machine are over. The days of the 1980s Braves are over, where they built the teams through their farm systems and they went out and they just beat everybody. Now you get to where you like a player and he's gone. I'm just saying, our lands went wayward. It's happening in our churches. Well, folks will come out, and the preacher get to preaching on the rainbow. They don't like it, so they'll go down the street. Uh, you know, Brother Bob Drake keeps telling me, you've got to quit preaching on politics, preacher. 
No, he doesn't. He likes it. That's the only time he says amen. Uh, you know, people say, oh, you shouldn't have politics from the pulpit. Well, how are people going to know they're wrong? CNN isn't going to tell them. Fox News isn't going to tell them. ABC isn't going to tell them. The only way people are going to know that things are wrong is if they hear it from a pulpit of righteousness. But our lands went wayward. We've gotten way away from what we should be. Oh, mercy. Our land is a wicked land. Sin running rampant in our streets. My father-in-law has been in law enforcement 51 years. 90% of the cases they see in the Boone County Courthouse have to do with heroin. What happened to all that money that was supposed to be sent to help folks that were strung out on opioids and strung out on drugs and all that? It all went away when the pandemic came about. Hmm? By the way, I ain't got to the message. Lord have mercy. Since I'm stirring it up, big boy. Saw it yesterday. They finally released what's in the vaccine that everybody had to take. It's something SP40 or something known to cause cancer. They put that in the vaccine. Because whether or not people want to believe it, for over a decade now, Bill Gates has been talking about population control. And guess who was behind the vaccine? Hmm? By the way, the same committee that met six months before the pandemic was announced has already met and they're planning for the second pandemic. You might as well just get used to it. Huh? You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say that we live in a wicked land. Why is Bill Gates buying up farmland? So he doesn't produce food. Why are the Chinese buying American farmland? So they won't produce food. You know the average grocery store can only feed its population for three days? What happens when they cut off food? We saw a little bit when they cut the chain supplies back last year. Y'all remember? Y'all remember when we had to go borrow toilet paper from Brother Ray because he was hoarding it up? How many times did we hear chain supply, chain supply, chain supply? The prices went up. But did you notice the portions got smaller? Because what are you going to do? You're going to pay the price or you're going to starve? Amen. They're setting you up for the Antichrist. Right. Now we know if you're, if you're blood-washed, born-again believer, we know the rapture's happening. We're out of here. It don't matter who the Antichrist is. But he, they're setting everything up for when the Antichrist shows up, has all the answers, and everybody's going to do what he says. Just like everybody did what the politician said. Where, whatever happened to Grouchy Fauci? What hole did he bury himself in? He was on TV every other hour. What happened to him? They exposed him to be a liar. They ain't seen him. Him and Hillary are hanging out at the country club. What I'm saying is we live in a wicked land, a wayward land, a weary land. But thanks be unto God for verse number 2. It says a man. It's talking about the God man, by the way, the son of man. We know him as Jesus. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. I ought to preach for just a few minutes on our great rock. He's a great rock in a weary land. Thanks be unto God, we got a great rock, the rock of ages. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, he's the solid rock. Uh, he's the chief cornerstone. He is our rock today. Yeah. Can I say some things out of verse number 2 about our rock? Four simple points. We'll go to the house. Uh, can I say first of all, he's a stronghold from the wind. Uh, look what it says. Uh, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. Uh, you ever been when the wind gets a blowing? I'm talking about that wind shear. Uh, I'm talking about that 50, 60 mile an hour stuff. Uh, I'm talking about that wind that tornadoes are made of. Uh, I'm talking 
talking about when the trees are bent sideways, uh, when things get uh, uh, scary in the house because uh, the house gets to shaking uh, because of the wind. Uh, can I say this weary uh, world uh, has a wind behind it uh, and it sure is uh, fearful when you get to looking around. Uh, but I'm glad we got a great rock uh, who's a stronghold from the wind. Uh, hey, let the wind blow. Uh, hey, I'm anchored into the rock. Uh, hey, uh, and anything anchored into the rock, uh, just like the three little pigs. Uh, hey, that wolf will huff and puff, uh, but he'll not blow this house down. Uh, hey, can I say, uh, uh, the Lord Jesus looked at Peter. Uh, he said, thou art Peter. Uh, then if you look at the situation, there's a pause. Uh, then he says, uh, and upon, he points to himself, uh, and upon this rock, uh, I will build my church, uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, what a blessing to be upon the rock uh, that even hell can't uh, 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 throw us over. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, he's a stronghold from the tempest. Uh, what a great rock we have. Can I say this? Uh, not only a stronghold from the wind, but a shelter from the tempest. Look what it says. It says, and a covert from the tempest. Ah, we get some storms blow through here. Ah, I think I'm right now back about uh, the Wizard of Oz. You know, when that tornado hits, they all run for the cellar. Uh, and I've seen many... Uh, uh, footage where folks will run and hide in the cellar and when the storm's over they open up the cellar uh, and the house has been blown away uh, I'm glad we got a covert from the tempest uh, uh, regardless of what this world says uh, regardless of how things are going on in the world uh, regardless uh, of the department of the head uh, 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 homeland security standing and saying uh, that one of the problems with America are fundamental Christians uh, regardless of what's brewing in this old world uh, I'm glad we got a covert uh, I'm glad I'm in his hand uh, and his hand's in the father's hand I'm glad uh, regardless of what this world does we have a haven in Christ uh, our great rocks a stronghold from the wind he's a shelter from the tempest but he's also a stream of living water it says has rivers of water in a dry place you know what's so wonderful about church we can come get a drink when you're not in church here in this world we're, we're in this world we're not of this world but we're still in this world we still got to listen to them. Even the weatherman lies to you. We still got to see all that's going on in this world. We still got to go shopping. We still got to go to Walmart. Not me, but you got to go to Walmart. We got to go to Aldi's. Or we got to go to Kroger. We got we to gotta go places in this world. We still got to pay uh, uh, for gas prices. It's crazy. I was in North Carolina here uh, uh, last week. Uh, I was paying $2.89 uh, everywhere for gas. And come up here, it's three thirty. Now, what a blessing. Uh, we are in this world, uh, and we're dealing with this world, uh, and we're constantly in this dry, uh, weary land. Uh, but we can come to the house of God, uh, or we can get to the water of the Word of God, uh, and that living water from within begins to flow. Uh, hey, I'm glad because of our great rock. Uh, streams of living water uh, hey you don't have to be thirsty uh, you don't have to wait uh, you can get a drink anytime you want uh, what a blessing uh, one drink of living water you'll never thirst again uh, an indictment against many Christians many churches as we act like the world we sit and wring our thumbs and worried about what's going on in this world uh, you just need no drink of living water. They ought to be envious of what we have. We ought to be like that woman of well, come see a man, told me all the things I ever I did. Is this not the Christ? One drink of living water changed her life. Amen. We ought to let folks know where they can get the water, huh? Then I thought about this, about our great rock. He's a shade from this weary land. Look at what it says. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. I'm glad. We're under his shadow, under his wings. I'm glad he hides the heat uh, from this old world. I'm glad even though this world's weary, we don't have to be because we are attached to the great rock. Hmm? 
Listen. Being in Christ gives us accesses and privileges lost people don't have. But also being in Christ gives us a hope that this world don't have. And that's where the shadow comes in. That's the shade of it all. We don't have to deal with the pressures and the stresses and the things they deal with. And all we got to do is roll them over on the Lord. He's our great rock. Now listen, the Bible says, They that live godly shall suffer persecution. Jesus never promised any of us a rose garden. He just promised to be the rose in the midst of our valleys. And can I say this? You're going to face things in this world, but you never face them alone. Miss Veronica got up and testified she buried two adult children. I know people get a hangnail and they quit God and quit church. Why is she still sitting in church? Why is she getting up and singing, Thank you, Lord? Why doesn't she have a bitter spirit against God? Because she found a friend that sticketh closer than a brother in the midst of her adversity. I'm glad we got a great rock. A rock that every wind of adversity and every wave has come against him and he's still standing. He's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. And he'll be your great rock. Mm -mm. Yeah, you may face some things, but you'll never face them without his help and his touch. And what a blessing to know it never comes to us unless it come through him. Friend, he's for us, not against us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, I don't like things that are going on in our country. I still love America. But I don't like things that she's becoming. But whatever happened to God's people standing up saying enough's enough? Hmm? I know Brother Josh is working. I threw that out last week. Well, I don't know. They had gay pride parades. Why don't we have a parade? He's working on it. Huh? Say, what happens if only a few of you show up? Well, just a few of you show up. I'll tell this story and I'll quit. Ralph Sexton Jr., pastor in Nashville, North Carolina, and I heard him say this in the 80s. So he was a young man then. Matter of fact, Ralph Sr. was still alive. And the gay pride movement made its way to Asheville. Now, you've got to understand, Asheville is not in the Bible Belt. Asheville is the buckle of the Bible Belt. And Brother Ralph was just incensed about it all. So he called all the pastors and said, Tell you what, why don't, why don't we just march and have a parade against this stuff? And everybody said, Yeah, Brother Ralph, we're with you. So he got the parade, parade permit. The police blocked off Main Street of Asheville. People started gathering. They knew some kind of parade was going to happen. It got about five minutes till the time of the parade to start. Brother Ralph standing there, and not one other pastor showed up. He's sitting there all defeated. He's like, what am I going to do? The Lord said, what I told you to do. So he went out. He stepped on that double yellow line during, on Main Street, Asheville, North Carolina, looked at the other end of the town, and he marched down that, that street preaching the Word of God. He said they laughed at him, they mocked him, they made fun of him. And by the time he got to the end of the town, he was so defeated. Felt like a fool. Got in his car, started toward home. And the Lord showed up in his car and said, You're just as successful as if everybody alongside that street got saved and born again because you did exactly what I told you to do. Say, so Preacher, what, what if we get a parade parade and nobody shows up? We'll do exactly what God told us to do. We'll have a parade. Huh? So we'll look like fools. Who cares? I've looked like a fool before. Who cares? If God wants us to do it, we'll do it. Amen. And if God gets glory from anything we do, I say, let's do it. And so, quit worrying about what they think. They need to worry about who we trust in. And they'll never know if we just keep all huddled up in here. Well, let's just let them know. We have a great rock. Oh, they've got some stones, but we got a great rock. And what a blessing.
to know Jesus, our rock. Do you know him tonight? Maybe you're here tonight, you know him, but you've been handling things your way and not his way. Why don't you get under the shadow of him? He takes all the pressure away. Hmm? Why don't you follow him? Why don't you do it his way? God spoke to your heart tonight. Maybe you need to come. Just tell him, thank you for being my rock. Maybe you need to come. Just tell him you love him. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. We got one rule around here. Just mind the Lord. Maybe he put somebody on your heart. Maybe Brother Brian's been a blessing to you. You just want to go tell him, hey, I want to thank you for being a blessing. You just mind the Lord. That's what, that's what we're supposed to do. Mind the Holy Spirit of God. Whatsoever he say to you, do it. All right? Let's all stand tonight. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. You know what will be good? Let's sing that what a day it'll be. A lot of songs about heaven tonight. Why don't you come get that ready, Brother Ray? And you just mind the Lord. He's here. And let him have his way in your heart tonight. Brother Ray gets that ready. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for being our rock. Lord, we wouldn't last two minutes under our own strength and own accord. But, Lord, we're going all the way to glory because we're anchored into you. Thank you, Lord. You're our anchor within the veil, steadfast and sure. Now, Father, help your people tonight. Maybe somebody tonight just needs to come and tell you they love you. Maybe somebody's really been distressed and they just need to come talk to you for a little bit. Maybe somebody just needs to go to somebody and tell them they've been a blessing or tell them they love them. Lord, just direct in this invitation. Help us to have discerning spirits to mind the Lord. And Father, certainly for somebody here tonight lost, I pray you convict them of their sin. And I pray tonight be the night of their salvation. Lord Jesus, thank you for first loving us so we could love you. Have your will and way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.